Hear me. I'm James Bodie, um, reasonably infamous in certain circles for being uh, head of research and development uh, for a mobile operator called Truephone. Um, this is my first Astricon in three years. The last time I, I, I made it to Astricon, we uh, announced and launched uh, the first mobile SIP client on the iPhone. Uh, it was reasonably uh, new and exciting in those days. This is about nine days after uh, the, uh, the exploit on the, um, on the iPhone. Since then, everybody's done that, so we've been forced to go and do some, some other new stuff. So I'm going to show you today some of the new stuff that I've been playing with uh, and uh, show you some devices and some bits and pieces that I find really cool, and hopefully you will. Um, and hopefully we can do a little bit of audience participation as well. Um, this is the, uh, the, uh, the kind of advert. Um, this is what I've been doing for the last year and a half. What I've been doing. Um, uh, becoming a GSM operator. So, um, um, Truefone started off as a mobile VoIP operator. Now we've moved into GSM and we're selling these things. Uh, they look like normal SIM cards, but believe me, they're not. These little babies run applications, Java-based applications, on the SIM card independently of the handset, which is reasonably cool, reasonably exciting. So you can take a really cheap and cheerful handset, like one of these, uh, costs less than £10, put in one of these, and it'll do some amazing tricks. So one of the, the, the amazing tricks that, that all of these do is that they dynamically switch their embassy, their identity, their international mobile sub, um, subscriber identity, when you go to a different country. So, uh, a European coming to North America normally would use uh, their European embassy and be charged something like $1.50 a minute to receive a call, which is daylight robbery. One of these things... Um, uh, arrives, you turn the thing on at uh, the airport, and he says, oh, hello, I'm in, in the USA. So instead of using that expensive UK MC, I'll use a domestic US one, and the cost is about one-fifteenth uh, of the cost. Um, we can handle, well, multiple MCs are in here, up to 30 to 40 MCs all at the same time. Um, other little tricks we can do, we can dynamically push new MCs into the SIM card, uh, over the air, over the signaling channel. Uh, what that means is if you go somewhere outrageous, like uh, 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 Tajikistan, uh, you don't have an embassy that works in Tajikistan, uh, then uh, we can push you a new one over the air, and within two to three minutes, you'll be up and running again, which is pretty cool. Uh, another little trick we do is we map multiple MSISDN, so telephone numbers, on the back end. So what that means is if you make a call to the US, it will present a US number so that people can call you back on. You can make a call to Australia. It'll present an Australian number that people can call you back on. So you're always local, which is kind of pretty cool. Anyway, that's, that's what I've been doing for the last two years. Let's go on to little bits and pieces. Oh, before we go on to uh, um, little bits and pieces, can I just test the, the, the life, science, life status of the audience? Um, can somebody please uh, call that number? The first person to call that number wins a prize. Who's going to be first? Which device will it ring? God, is mobile coverage that bad in here? Who's got it? Well, there we go. Is this one? Who is? It? No, somebody's gone to voicemail. All right, who's talking to me? Hello. Yeah, who? Who's talking to me now? You. Yeah. Well, the rest of you gone gone through to voicemail. Congratulations, you've won a prize. There you are. Some English sweeties and a gift gaff SIM card. Congratulations. There you go. There'll be a number of other little challenges as we progress, just to make sure that you are still awake. Um, uh, yeah, do hang up. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, the number you're, you're calling, by the way, is uh, an original Truffaut number, um, which is working on this Nokia E61, which is one of the, the first original um, dual-mode handsets. So this does mobile SIP voice over IP, which it's working on in this room on the, uh, on the X Expo Wi-Fi. Um, and they're still very, very good. So um, you can pick up these for something like 50 bucks on eBay now. Uh, but if you want a, a cheap SIP device, something like the Nokia E61s, the E61i, absolutely brilliant. Anyway, moving on, uh, let's talk about filling the not spots. What do I mean by filling the not spots? Um, there are many, many scenarios today where um, your cell phone just doesn't work, um, where you're out of range, or you could be somewhere like uh, in the middle of New York, but you're on the 68th floor of a high-rise building. And the big problem with that is, um, well, cell phones don't work. The higher up you go in, in New York, the, the higher the noise level, and uh, the signal-to-noise ratio is just so bad, it just doesn't work. So let's examine some of the ways that we can, um, we can fix um, uh, our really poor coverage. Um, Tim's little presentation that he did um, half an hour ago was really good, because it's a good segue into this. Um, one of the uh, popular ways of doing, uh, enhancing your coverage, is to use uh, a little tiny base station. I've got one here. This is uh, a femto cell. This is a 3G femto cell. This one produced in France for Vodafone. Uh, these cost about 50 pounds in UK and you plug it into your broadband network, and uh, it then radiates on, in this case, 3G spectrum, and gives you a, a tiny little 3G base station, uh, which is good for a range of about 300 to 400 meters. I, I have a number of these in my house. They're, they're really uh, brilliant bits of kit. Um, but, and the, uh, the people who are using these at the moment are typically people like AT&T, in the US and Vodafone in, in the UK. But that's not the only way of doing it. Um, uh, another way, uh, which is becoming really quite popular, or be, it's not becoming popular at all, what am I saying? Another way of doing it is to use something called uh, UMA, Unlicensed Mobile Access. Um, and that is um, a system where you run GSM, but over Wi-Fi. Okay, and I've got an example here. Well, I'm going to try something a little bit interesting. If I go over to here, there we go. I can actually show you one. Uh, which handset is it? Um, here we go. Uh, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about this, uh, this handset a little bit later. Uh, but this is a, a handset which is on the orange network <laughs> in UK. Uh, clearly, it's, uh, it's not working, uh, uh, it's not, sorry, to make a, a call or receive a call here in Denver would be extremely uh, expensive. And uh, you know what? The Wi-Fi's dropped out on me. How, how unusual is that? Let's try that again. So here we go. You see up here, uh, ooh, I've got a text message from Michael Balicki. How entertaining. Um, I've got a little red um, house that appeared. Uh, and if this is working properly, that goes green. And uh, I am connected to the orange network, but over Wi-Fi. You know what? This is not going to do it. I might just come back to that a little bit later. Because I want to demonstrate something else on this, this, uh, this handset, using UMA. OK. Um, not very many people are using UMA. The re main reason for that is that uh, it costs a very large amount of money to, to set up UMA th uh, in the back end. So something like of the order of, I don't know, $50 million is what um, uh, it costs T-Mobile USA to do it. Um, the, the people in the uh, US who, who do UMA are T-Mobile 
and the, the main people in Europe who are doing it are orange. Uh, big innovation recently is that um, until very recently, you had to have a dedicated UMA handset to do UMA. Uh, but recently, we've seen the emergence of software-based UMA. So you can take a normal handset, run an application on it, and it runs UMA. Absolutely super. OK, lots of benefits of um, uh, sorry, I've, I... sorry, the, uh, the other uh, way of doing, uh, enhancing your, your, your coverage is to use uh, voice over IP but over Wi-Fi. And uh, I have a number of examples of that. Here's uh, um, the, uh, the, no oh, gosh. the Nokia that we, we played with a little bit earlier. Uh, these have been around for, what, uh, five or six years now. Good example of uh, voice over Wi-Fi. But um, is um, the, oh, no, that's this one here. This is another example of voice over uh, Wi-Fi using an iPhone. This one's an iPhone 4. Um, Big advantage of using voice over Wi-Fi is that the, uh, the initial setup cost is considerably smaller, which is uh, why there, all of a sudden there are lots and lots of people doing voice over Wi-Fi, of which Truefone is, is but one. Okay. Okay, let's flick back. Um, and there's another solution, which is to use a, a composite analog telephone adapter. There are a number of these on the market. I haven't bought one of these with me today, uh, but things like the, the Gigaset um, SIP-based um, devices um, are, are good examples of this. Right, I'm going to go forward. I'm going to slip that, uh, uh, miss out that one. And let's talk about the, um, the, uh, the femto cells. Um, Vodafone have deployed well, of the order of 250,000 of these um, and there was a bit of a stir in, in UK about two and a half months ago when uh, a hacker group based in Berlin announced that they'd managed to hack into uh, the, uh, the Vodafone Femto cells and uh, got access to the, well, the cryptographic key variables and in particular opened it up so that you could intercept traffic um, using the, uh, uh, the femto cell. The details are on the li links there. Um, and the whole episode was incredibly interesting. Vodafone immediately stopped selling um, um, uh, these devices and within half a day had produced a patch to up and up, forced an upgrade of the software on all of the devices. Um, need, needless to say, it's still possible to uh, take these things and um, uh, reinstall the old firmware and you can use them for a, a variety of different um, uh, purposes. Um, Tim earlier talked about the, the USRP-based um, OpenBTS cells that were used in Burning Man. They're great bits of kit. I mean, they're, they cost about, what, 650 to to $1,000 a piece. They're great, um, but it's still 650 to to $1,000. The great thing about these is that you can buy these for 50 pounds, what, 75, uh, $75, and you can hack into these, and you can use these for your home purposes. Um, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. Let's move, move on from that. Let's talk about something... Uh, um, else it's really cool and, and happening. Um, Tim mentioned that one of the big problems that, uh, or one of the big barriers to people putting up their own femto cells is that they don't have the spectrum. Well, the good news is that there are a number of initiatives, both here in the US and in Europe, um, that are aimed at opening up spectrum for users to run their own low power base stations. Um, this is uh, an article from uh, the Broadband Law Advisor, which is talking about uh, a proposal that's going through the FCC at the moment, which talks about uh, using existing cellular spectrum 
on a secondary non-interference basis. Um, this will allow, if, if this one passes through um, the FCC, will allow individuals to uh, use low-power devices on a non-interference basis. So if you, if you live somewhere where, there, where there's no coverage, um, you can put up one of these things, or you will, you will be able to put up one of these things without obtaining a license, which is quite entertaining. Um, in, in Europe, um, there's a slightly different um, direction being taken in that uh, in, in UK now, uh, Ofcom have announced that, um, that the white space spectrum, that's the 700-800 megahertz TV spectrum, uh, is being opened up, again on a secondary non-interference basis, for uh, low-power telephony uh, purposes. And anyone can go out and buy uh, a cognitive radio white space base station and plug it in and... Um, do all the sort of things that uh, Tim was doing at Burning Man. Um, that's not quite live yet in UK, but it's coming. Uh, we expect to see that ratified and live um, sometime middle of next year. Uh, there are currently trials going on in the north of Scotland and in the university town of Cambridge. Uh, hardware is being produced by an outfit called Newell, who was started by the, the founders of uh, the firm Cambridge Silicon Radio. So they're they're all billionaires. Uh, they have the capability to build these things. Uh, handsets are being produced for the trial by Motorola, Nokia, HTC, and Samsung. So expect to see some white space handsets appearing over the next year or so in order to make use of white space uh, spectrum and femto cells. Uh, also, um, you may not be aware that in, the, uh, in Europe, uh, there are little bits of spectrum which used to be used for decked handset guard bands. So at the top end of the, uh, the, the 1800 uh, GSM spectrum, um, there's a, well, uh, over the top, there's a decked hand, um, ho home phone um, spectrum. Uh, in between the GSM and the deck bands, they, they were worried that there would, there would be interference. So they put in a, a guard band of something like eight or 10 GSM channels. But that has now become available uh, in UK to a number of license holders, of which I'm one. Uh, and uh, in other European countries is uh, becoming totally license free. So anybody can go out and buy uh, a low power, what, 200, 300 milliwatt uh, base station, and they can operate it themselves. Uh, uh, int rather interestingly, I live in a house in the, uh, in the middle of the, uh, English countryside, where uh, cellular coverage stops about five miles down the road until you get to within about uh, 300 metres of my house and it all works. OK, I wasn't expecting that to come up. But let's talk about something a little bit different now. Um, Tim, no, it wasn't. It's Joe Jose mentioned uh, that a burning man, uh, they bought how many handsets, a thousand handsets, and flung them out at people. Well, I've got some examples here. Um, this is technology which I find extremely sexy. Here we go. This is uh, a Nokia 1800, uh, which these were, 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 were selling. I bought these, sorry, I bought these in UK for £2.51 each with a new SIM card and £10 worth of credit, calling credit for £2.51. They're unlocked. This particular bit of kit is a, is a dual band GSM handset. It has a battery life of, uh, of approximately two weeks. It has a flashlight on the top. Let's see if I can turn my flashlight on. Oh, perhaps I can't. Oh, far too difficult. Flashlight, there we go. Flashlight on. Select. There we are. It's enough to find your way to your tent, I suppose. But, um, so it's got a, a flashlight, it's got a, a, an RDS FM radio built in there as well. And all for £2.51. It's absolutely stunningly um, almost unbelievable. The real production cost of these is of the order of... Th I can't turn the thing off now. Uh, the, it, the production cost is of the order of $30 to $35, uh, but they're sold in UK with, uh, with a subsidy. Um, 
Okay, let's switch back to that. Um, yeah, interestingly, I, I did a little uh, church charity thing arranged the other day. Rather than have people uh, donating five or ten, ten pounds uh, to a charity, I got a whole load of people to go out and each person bought two of these. We collected about 400 of them, boxed them up and sent them out to Su South Sudan where they're well, being put to very, very good use. Okay, that's the Nokia 1800, a super bit of kit and changing people's lives, totally changing people's lives. The other bit of kit I want to share with you now is, is this bit of kit here, the uh, Orange San Francisco. Here we are, if we show you that. Uh, this one is uh, a rebranded um, uh, ZTE Skate, comes out of China. Uh, again, these are uh, available across the counter in UK for around £100, so about $150. Um, they're Android 2.3.4 um, with all the bells and whistles. It's got a 4.3-inch um, um, LCD dis display. does all the normal tricks that you would expect. And in addition to all of those, this does a couple more. Uh, this does uh, UMA as well, which I tried to demonstrate earlier and kind of crashed and burnt. And it also supports um, high-definition voice. So um, you can make calls using AMR Wideband. Um, and I made a call the other day to a customer services rep in India. And you know how painful they can be sometimes. And I normally want to kill somebody after I've had a, a customer services call with India. Um, but because we're using, what was it, 20 kilohertz hi-fi quality voice, the experience was just absolutely marvellous. Um, I couldn't believe how good it was. So anyway, that's the um, £100 smartphone, um, which I think is pretty cool. Um, OK, I'm going to miss out that one, the other one. Prize time again. Who can make a voice call to this number first? Which phone will go off? I can't even remember myself, actually. Which one's it going to be? OK, who is? The phone is ringing. It's cool, isn't it? OK, who's 404-725? Well done, sir. OK, you win. So more sweeties. Um, uh, another, where's my SIM card's gone? One of these. If you come see me afterwards, I'll tell you exactly what, what, what these SIM cards do. But you'll enjoy that. And I can get instruction on the sweeties as well. Uh, <laughs> if you wish, yes, if you need that. Oh, exhausting. Right, what have we got next? Oh, I've just done that. £100 smartphone. I'm doing this in the, the wrong order. Right, some more really cool stuff. Skype phones. I bet you people, you, you American people, didn't even know that in UK uh, you can make and receive Skype calls on the 3G network at absolutely zero cost. Did you know that? No. Well, you can. I've got a couple here. Um, I won't use the video camera on them. These little bits of uh, kit... Uh, were selling, I mean, you can't buy them now, but they, they're still available on eBay. They're selling for about 40 quid a piece, 40 pounds, so what's that, $60. These are 3G handsets, um, they, and uh, the unique thing about these is that 3, the 3G provider in UK, offers free calls to Skype, that, um, Skype um, endpoints, totally free. Um, and believe me, they're incredibly useful. My, my children all run around with these. They have pay-as-you-go SIM cards in there uh, with zero credit on. We never, ever put any credit on the SIM cards with these because you don't need it because the Skype calls are free. Um, one of the ways that we use these is we combine them with um, um, Voxeo developer accounts 
um, with a, it, two lines, three lines of code, you can um, make a call on one of these on a plus 990 number into uh, Voxeo, and then you pop out the other side on SIP VoIP, or you can pop it into an IVR, or you can just do second stage dialing, whatever you want. Absolutely brilliant. So, so my kids can always phone home. They, they just phone a number or make a Skype call. Uh, they've got a, 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 a voice uh, based IVR, and so they just say dad or mum, and it places a call to dad or mum. Uh, totally free, free of charge. Um, who was it? Is it Verizon in the US who took these bits and pieces off? Uh, so, so, sorry, started offering a Skype calling service. The big problem uh, with that was that you had to have a, was it a $450 smartphone in order to do it, which completely you know, lost the whole point of it. Um, but still, I thought you might be interested in seeing those. Uh, it's still live today, um, still exciting stuff, and my children still make extensive use of those. Um, what else have I got that's cool? Uh, anybody recognize this little beast apart from Randy? Oh, pff, of course. Um, I've got one here. This is the OB-110. It's a bit of a cheesy. Uh, as they say, the force is strong in this one. Uh, this is a, an, an analog telephone adapter with a twist. It's made by a company called ob High, uh, which you probably haven't heard of, but you've probably heard of uh, the products that the team who make this had previously made. They started off a little company called Komodo, uh, what, 10 years ago, uh, which were bought out, and they made, made the first, well, proper uh, analog telephone adapter. Uh, and the Komodo were bought by Cisco, and the Komodo ATA became the Cisco ATA-184-186. They made a number of millions of dollars uh, by doing that. They, they went away and had a big holiday, in, I don't know, Hawaii or somewhere, came back, reinvented themselves as Sipora. Now, you've probably seen Sipora uh, out on the ground, uh, the SPA 2000, SPA 3000, and oh, bits and pieces. Uh, they then managed to sell themselves again to Cisco Linksys for considerably more money. Um, and, uh, and if you go in the exhibition hall, you, you can still see Sipora bits and pieces of kit badge Cisco Link Linksys. Um, they then did their golden handcuff um, term, disappeared off on holiday again, did a bit more thinking, and came back with the OB-110. Um, what's different about this, uh, well, what's similar about it, it, it has one, FXO, one FXS, one FXO port, just like a normal sort of uh, ATA. Uh, it supports multiple SIP accounts, and it's got all the really good stuff that's in all the Cisco stuff, you know, the remote configuration stuff. But in addition to that, it has native XMPP. What does that mean? It means you can hang this directly off your Google Voice account. And voila, you've got free calling out to North America. Well, most of you are American, so that's kind of what you want anyway. Uh, and calling back, dialing back, all for free. How good is that? So you don't have to pay any monthly rental at all. You just use one of these. Um, but that's not all. They've, um, they've also implemented something they call the, the circle of trust, um, which means it's a means of allowing you to share access to your ATA with your friends and family. And the way that works is they've got, um, I might have a dog, uh, thing about that. Yeah. Uh, they've got a number of applications there's a PC-based one, iPhone, Android app, which allows you to access your OB110, and the force is definitely strong, um, uh, to make and receive calls um, when you're out and about with your smartphone or just using a PC. Now, how cool is that? The cost of these, I think, is something like 50 bucks, Randy? 50 bucks? Something like that? 50, 60? 39 bucks. Yeah, incredible. Bargain of the century. Why are they not here? Probably because it's all far too difficult coming to, uh, to Denver, I suppose. They don't do snow. They do Hawaii instead. But anyway, that's the OB-110. I thought you'd be interested to see that. I've got absolutely n 
no commercial connection with them, but I just think it's pretty cool. It is. It's very cool. We like those. The guys from Cisco won't talk to me now, will they? Okay, text to win time. Who's going to be the first? Which device will it come out on? <laughs> I bet you were, weren't you? Oh, uh, who's calling in voice? Who's 609477? That's a voice call. I, I want SMS, please. Oh, no. Who's 206550017? Well done, sir. Oh, crikey. I've, I've got multiple devices going off now. Um, okay, prize time. Where's my prize gone? <laughs> it's not fair. Um, I've got... What have I done with my SIM cards? I've got a SIM card, but I've got something else for you. I haven't got any more sweeties, but here you go. Here you go. There, there's your, your famous gift gaff SIM card. I'll tell you what it does later. Now, in fact, I might, I might actually tell you what it does now, because I think everybody probably wants to know what it is. Uh, just out of interest, uh, lots of things are going off there. Um, the, let's just switch camera over. There we go. Just to, pr just to prove that it did come, come through. Oh, somebody else is, so that's 245. Who's 245430916? Is that someone else? You can have a gift gaff SIM card if you own up. <laughs> Who was that? Who, who? Oh, right, hey, have a gift gaff SIM card. Um, yeah, the, uh, the client that I'm using to take that on is um, our own client on the, uh, on the iPad, um, which works both voice and SMS. Uh, this one's in prepaid mode, as you can see. You probably can't see, but it's got real-time credit balance in there. Where are we? In there. Um, and it's a free download if you've got an iPad. Cracking good bit of kit, so if you want to try before you buy, um, you can have one of those. And you can make VoIP calls and send and receive text messages. Um, many of them for free. Um, okay. Where am I going next? I can't remember. Oh. I've run out of slides. In which case, I'll tell you about, I tell you about the gift gaff SIM card? This is a good, good segue. Am I running out of time yet? No. Okay, the gift gaff SIM cards. What, what is gift gaff? Gift gaff is a new type of MVNO, Mobile Virtual Network Operator. This one, rather bizarrely, is totally 100% owned and operated by O2, which is the, the UK version of Telefonica. Um, and what's really exciting about it is that it's kind of managed and largely operated by the community. It's a community, a crowdsourced um, telco. So all the customer support, well, not all of it, but about 98% of it, is done by the communi community. If you have a question or a query, you post it up on, on, on the net, and somebody within the community will answer it, and they get, if they uh, answer your question in a, in a satisfactory manner, they get kudos points, which equate to credit on their account. Does that make sense? I've, I run four of these um, in multiple devices, including I've got one in here in my Samsung Galaxy Tab. Um, um, and I've never, ever bought any credit because people keep, keep on giving, for some strange reason, keep on giving me kudos and lots of money. Um, other things about it, they... It, Basically, it works in uh, pay-as-you-go mode uh, with reasonably cheap rates. So at the moment, I think it's uh, any voice network, eight pence a minute um, to, to, to send. It's free to receive in the UK. Uh, SMS is four pence. But uh, if you want to use more, then you can get things called goodie bags. And a typical goodie bag uh, costs 10 pounds. will give you uh, 300 any network minutes within UK unlimited SMS, and best of all, unlimited 3G data. Now, how good is that for £10? Absolutely awesome. So, um, they, uh, and um, the credit balances on these don't expire, unlike virtually every other pay-as-you-go mobile network in the UK. These just go on and on and on. Um, so, but anybody who's thinking of going to UK you probably want to pick up one of these before you go, a gift gaff SIM card. 
so that uh, when you land in UK, uh, you use one of those. Or alternatively, if you're more of a mobile traveler, you can have one of ours, uh, a true phone SIM card with multiple MCs and multiple MSISDNs. I could get into trouble for promoting somebody else's product. But I thought I'd tell you that about these because I think these are really, really cool and really good. Almost as good as ours, but ours is a little bit more expensive. But you get what you pay for. Okay, I think I'm probably going to stop there. I've got lots of other devices, um, but if you want to ask any questions about some of the other, some of the toys I've shown you, or something I haven't shown you, um, I'm open for questions. <laughs>